I am delighted to welcome uh, Greg and Brian from Cerner. They're going to talk about their experience using Tanzu. Greg, Brian, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Awesome. So uh, let's start with the uh, question about your role. Uh, what is your role and how do you end up with these roles at Cerner? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Greg Meyer. I'm a director and distinguished engineer here at Cerner. I've been here for about 25 years. Um, I'm currently responsible for solution architecture and development uh, within our health IT interoperability organization. And I'm also a developer advocate and I spend a lot of time evangelizing cloud native uh, development and developer experiences. Very nice. Hi, uh, my name is Brian Kelly. I'm a software engineer at Cerner. I've been here for about 14 years. Um, my primary responsibility is running and evangelizing all sorts of interesting tech uh, related to Tanzu now. Um, in a prior life, I was a software engineer that worked on writing software. And uh, I got into this role because I got very disgruntled with how software was delivered. And I really wanted to see a better outcome. I wanted to see our teams being able to deliver their uh, great solutions to production quickly. And I felt that the Tanzu provided that ability and I took on the mantle of evangelizing and advocating for it. That's great because yeah, so, no, nobody wants uh, disgruntled engineers around. No, no, disgruntled engineers leave. <laughs> yeah. So um, with uh, Cloud Foundry and Tanzu Application Service, you have abstracted the uh, infrastructure tasks from developers. Can you tell us um, who was involved in the decision? What was the thought process? The decision tree that we went through was pretty in detail because we were trying to make sure teams follow the 12 factor manifesto as best as possible. Um, but it, you know, it was easy for teams to think that they don't have to manage VMs anymore. They don't have to manage building containers. They could focus on healthcare applications. That really can be a joyous thing because sometimes we get caught up in why is my build not building? Why is my you know, CI server down? Why is uh, X, Y, or Z happening that, that makes for a really bad day for developers? We were trying to remove as many of those moving parts and having the team manage them themselves and manage them as a service. So you know, we were providing pipelines as a service. We were providing continuous delivery as a service, as well as continuous integration as a service. Um, that, that made teams be able to focus on what truly mattered, which was providing business value to our healthcare clients. So if I can add a, add a little bit of an anecdote to that, and this, this goes along, uh, along with that piece of, of abstraction, um, as, as we went through this journey from that, that proof of concept that Brian mentioned uh, about five years ago, and then getting to our final production environment, we did jump around to, to multiple, multiple IaaS's. You know, we started on AWS. Uh, we moved to vSphere on-prem and then OpenStack, and then we came back for uh, full circle at the end, back to AWS uh, for our first production deployment. So, and, and each time as we jumped from IaaS to IaaS, you know, due to that abstraction that we got from Cloud Foundry, it was almost trivial to, to make those jumps and those moves from, from different IaaSs. And I've, you know, I've heard a lot of stories from teams and other companies where they're taking months or potentially even over a year you know, if they're if they're all in on a specific IaaS, you know, making a change from something like AWS to Azure, uh, when we executed our pipelines for that final AWS switch, you know, we completed the entire process and, and honestly got only four hours. You know, it took us four hours to do that. That included everything from data services to those pipelines and uh, configuration services and having applications up and running across all of our dev and pre-production environments. And the, really the best part about this is that my development team, they really didn't know any difference uh, between going to OpenStack and, and AWS. You know, that developer experience, developer experience in the process was almost exactly the same. That's, that's great. You know, you're not alone in uh, using multiple clouds, right? 75% of our customers use two or more clouds and having the, the ability to look at all of them as one with this level of abstraction uh, in your own words takes processes that, that potentially can take months to hours, which is very powerful. Uh, and clearly you look like you have an environment where you use both VM-based applications and uh, service-based applications, containers-based applications. So tell us uh, what is the role of Kubernetes today in the next uh, 12 months at Cerner? It's a great question. You know, there's a lot of workloads at Cerner already on Kubernetes. Um, we, we, we were an early adopter 
uh, we, we used it for many business lines and it made a lot of sense uh, in those business lines. The, the problem that we ran into is we just don't have consistency. So our long-term strategy over the next 12 months is to unify and have less, um, I don't know, undifferentiated heavy lifting across business units on Kubernetes and on Cloud Foundry. And we're looking at things like Tanzu Application Platform to help us unify all of these uh, teams so that they can have consistency, which is big in the business, but also get that same lift and outcomes that we were getting with Cloud Foundry for all those years with Tanzu Application Services. We believe that we're gonna be able to have that happen and we believe that we're going to be able to standardize how application delivery will happen on Kubernetes um, and not have so much um, toil and, and maybe in some cases shadow IT that happens because developers are just trying to get their job done because they're partially disgruntled sometimes. We want to bring the joy back. So Greg, tell me more about how you use uh, the Tanzu application platform and Cloud Foundry as an abstraction layer across multiple Kubernetes, across multiple clouds. So, you know, getting back to the, the cross cloud Kubernetes, you know, it, it's the same thing that we stated before, you know, it's, it's consistency across all of your experiences. You know, you want that developer experience to be the same, no matter if you're in AWS or an Azure in vSphere, you know, we've, we've gotten this with Cloud Foundry over the last five years. And I anticipate we're going to see those, those same type of benefits as we move over to TAP. That's fantastic. And so what's the future of TAP? What is, uh, you know, uh, coming around the corner? Um, so, go ahead, Greg. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, as I said earlier, we, we currently have TAS, um, you know, it's deployed on AWS, Azure, and vSphere, which is our on-prem. Um, but, our, but our plan long-term is to complement each one of those offerings with a TAP presence. So, yeah, go ahead, Brian. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's all about complementing. Um, you know, we have Cloud Foundry in many different regions across the globe today. We have data centers and uh, public cloud regions across the globe today. We have Kubernetes as well in those environments. We should be able to converge all of these workloads and successes onto a unified platform that's tab and get the same level of lift to, the, to those teams and maybe try to tease out why we had to do things differently in one area versus another and make that something that developers don't have to worry about anymore. Or even operators, we can't forget about them too. They need to be happy about delivering applications to production. And the future there is, is just making that job easier, um, not so cumbersome, reducing blast radiuses, uh, reducing the amount of uh, toil when something does necessarily go, go wrong with a production deployment, being able to have a really quick mean time to recovery um, we see that being problematic in some of our Kubernetes workloads today, and we're hoping that utilizing TAP, we should be able to start to uncover what some of those problems are and have permanent fixes in place to keep the, the joy in programming. Yeah, so thank you very much for, for your time today. I love your story because uh, uh, VMware being a software development company, we understand the value of keeping developer productive. Uh, and you clearly have, uh, you know, figured out how to do that in a multi-cloud environment and in a hybrid environment, uh, spanning on-prem and multiple clouds uh, and using VMs and containers. So fantastic story. Thank you for being a great customer and thank you for sharing your stories with our customers. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.